3DO。Seven weeks have passed since we set sail from Enroth. Slaves freed from our skirmishes with Regnan fleets talk of the turmoil in Arathia. I suspect their stories are true, but I must see the evidence with my own eyes. The ocean tides were kind enough to bury the fallen on its shores. However, the smoking ruins of Cloudfire greeted us with nothing but destruction and the stench of death. With no survivors, only the battlefield could tell me what happened here. Despite the breath of devastation, the presence of Minotaurs suggests a raiding party. However, the ranks were too well organized. This is the work of the dungeon overlords. Evidently, the wizards were prepared, but overrun nevertheless. These atrocities rend my heart and fuel my anger. Arathia's banner must be respected, never disgraced. Think of my beloved Roland and my son Nikolai, and how much further this war will carry me from them. But my duty is clear. My father's kingdom must survive. Arathia must not fall to its enemies. Our initial landing has captured a devastated outpost. Information is scarce and unreliable at best. Neighboring citizens have fled their villages. Remaining survivors tell conflicting stories. Evidence points to a Nyon invasion. Rally local militia and train them quickly. Destroy all hostile forces you encounter. Assume the worst. Assume we are at war. Pressing toward Arathia's capital of Stedwick, we have encountered peasants talking of Fairfeather, a town to the north. Though surrounded, it has withstood the Nyon invasion. Reports are unconfirmed, but these peasants believe angels watch over the town. Angels have been spotted in Arathia before. During the Cregan infestation, scattered reports told of winged beings massacring large Cregan forces. Either the angels have returned, or they never left. How long Fairfeather can last against the Nyon and Cregan onslaught is unknown. If Fairfeather falls, a potential ally may be lost. Each year, griffins from around the world migrate to Griffincliff. Armies of King Griffinheart I tamed the griffins and trained them for war. With these great beasts, King Griffinheart unified the divergent human colonies and formed Erathia. King Griffinheart felt the land's native griffins were key to any Erathian war. To secure Stedwick, we need the griffins. A 
large elfish population inhabits Irathia's southeastern coast. Green and gold dragons native to the region augment their military strength. Before we conquer this region and detour our forces to Stedwick, we must annihilate these dragons. Our Kriegan allies from Eiffel requested the honor of this mission. The Kriegans are fierce warriors. They will enjoy the slaughter. Reports claim a fleet of Enrothian warships have landed on the southern coast of Erothia. We do not know who commands this force or its size. Through sources in Eiffel, we know Roland Ironfist cannot lead this fleet. Regardless, our plans remain unchanged. We start the last phase of our underground invasion and solidify our position along the southeastern coast. Afterwards, we can transport more reinforcements from Nyon. We have dug the last tunnels to this area. You will have the tactical advantage. Catherine Ironfist has enlisted aid from Bracada and Avli. She knows we are close to Stedwick. We must occupy Stedwick before she arrives. Once we own Arathia's capital, not even Catherine Ironfist will wrench it from our hands. As you foresaw, my lord, King Griffinheart's death brings many opportunities for your mercenary skills. A messenger from Titania on behalf of King Trelosk has contacted us. Twenty years ago, following numerous border skirmishes along the western shore of Erathia, Titania signed an agreement to cease hostilities. King Griffinheart is dead. Their agreement has died with him. Aggressive tactics have never been part of Titania's military character. Their ranks are vast, and once they possess Arathian land, they will hold it. However, they need generals to guide their heroes to expand their borders and accommodate their growing population. Your abilities have been brought to the attention of the barbarian nation of Krulod. Their skirmishes with the Arathian military on their eastern border are legendary. Many credit them for hardening the Rathian soldiers. Recently, a border raid resulted in victory and, uncharacteristically, a large number of prisoners. Upon interrogation, their suspicions were confirmed. Without King Griffinheart, Arathia has lost its soul. Your goal is to quickly plunder the Arathian land within Kulad's immediate reach. Once they have the resources they need, war will be discussed. Until then, your independent participation is needed. Should you be captured, Trulod will claim you were an overzealous clan leader acting outside the interests of the nation. Representatives from both Titalia and Krulod seek your services. Again. Both nations claim the last strip of Arathian land between their countries. Few Arathian castles remain in the area. They are nothing more than token resistance. The most ferocious battles will occur between Titalia and Kulad. Ironically, this land has little value. This is a border war. Titalia seeks to further extend its reach from the lowlands to the hills. Kulad wants to halt Titalia's march before it reaches their northern border. No matter which side you fight for, the other will perceive you as a traitor. Choose wisely. Choose the winning side. Your life depends upon it. Early intelligence reports, forces from Nyon and Eofol have barricaded themselves inside Stedwick. All land access to the capital has been blocked. Their reinforcements arrive via underground tunnels. Armies from the west will meet us on the field of battle. There is little else to say. We do not stop until Stedwick is liberated. My name is Dorel, ambassador from Avli. 
I bring a message from Queen Catherine. After the liberation of Stedwick, a Cregan envoy appeared before the royal court. He claims they have captive King Roland Ironfist of Enroth. They are asking for one million gold ransom. We cannot validate this claim. True or not, Queen Catherine is unwilling to pay. After interrogating the envoy, we learned Roland is held deep inside Eofel by Clan Creela. Locate Clan Creela's base of operations and rescue Roland. In addition to your Erathian army, we will support you from Avli. This mission is of utmost seriousness. You may rescue Roland, or find yourself the victim of a trap. My name is Winston Langer, ambassador from Bracada, ruled by Grand Vizier Gavin Magnus. Forces from Tetalia and Krulad are fighting in West Arathia. After months of conflict, the battle still rages. Though weary of yet another war, my king sends reinforcements to aid your efforts. Brilliant tactics will not win this battle. Body count will determine the victor. Good luck. We now know how Arathia fell to Nyon and Eofol. Through an extensive network of underground tunnels dug by the Overlord's armies, they struck simultaneously in many areas with overwhelming numbers. Credit the military for holding the invasion to half the country. We have discovered the main artery for transporting forces from Nyon to Arathia. It is under the ocean, connecting the Nyon underworld to the Arathian mainland. Bricotta and Avali have sent armies to join the fight. First, we must eliminate the remaining Cregans and Nyon forces from the mainland, then pursue them underground and drive them back to the shores of Nyon. Our nation's goal was to kill the man who banished us from Erathia. However, Nyan and Aeofel's subsequent invasion has done us an unexpected favor. Erathia is strewn with the dead. For the necromancers, this is a season of harvest. This is a season for war. Queen Catherine is a formidable foe. To defeat Erathia's remaining military, we will need a tactician greater than her. We have a plan. An ironic plan. While Catherine organizes the last stages of her war with Nyon and Eofel, you will sneak into Erathia and locate King Griffinheart's grave. Be wary. The region is occupied by scattered Erathian. When the gravesite is found, we will resurrect the dead king and make him our pawn. With King Griffinheart commanding our armies, his former home will become our land of the dead. While resurrecting King Griffinheart from the dead, former King Vilmar met with an unfortunate accident. King Griffinheart has taken command of the military and the throne. His control over the dead is beyond anything we have seen. This bodes well for our invasion. However, our lords watch their new king, searching for a sign of weakness. Before we begin our large-scale invasion of Erathia, we must fill our ranks. Erathia's populace will provide the recruits we need. Invade the local region and resurrect the needed troops. A Death Knight named Mott refuses to obey King Griffinheart's orders. An example must be made, so others will not contemplate such traitorous action. Mott has insulated himself with his armies. Infiltrate his troops, kill him, and take his command. When he is dead, 
resurrect his corpse and employ him in your ranks. Irathia's military lies before us. It is time to make a bold strike. King Griffinheart has trained their generals and knows their tactics. Morale will decide this battle. Morale is not a factor for the undead. Once we fill our ranks with their dead, our horde will grow and their morale will falter. Then we will swarm over them. Soon King Griffinheart will rule Arathia once again. Upon liberating Stedwick, my fears were confirmed. My father did not die of natural causes. He was poisoned. Investigations conducted by General Morgan Kendall prior to the war yielded no suspects. Now I learn the necromancers, seeking a military tactician equal to myself, have resurrected my father, King Griffinheart. After killing King Vilmar, he took command of their military and their throne. Now they come to us. They cannot stop the monster they have created. As a gesture of good faith, they send a messenger to speak only to me. He will tell me who killed my father. Find this hero and deliver him to me safely. I grow weary of this war. So do the necromancers. We have agreed to cooperate in the destruction of King Griffinheart. I never thought I would fight alongside the Necromancers, but today we forge weapons for both our armies. With their help, along with the forces from Bracada and Avali, we should be able to repel all undead from Arathia. What remains of my father's undead army is the necropolis where he resides. His last legions of undead are significant. I will join this difficult battle, but you will command the field. There is one more order you must follow without question. Lord Hart must not die. He is our traitor. We have confirmed the information the necromancers gave to us. Lord Hart was part of King Vilmar's necromantic cult. With Lord Hart's access to Stedwick, poisoning King Griffinheart's food was a simple task. Acting on orders from King Vilmar, he sought to avenge the banishment of the necromancers from Arathia. I have special plans for Lord Hart. Throughout my life, my father emphasized my duty to the kingdom and my duty to justice. Today, I did both by delivering to my father, Lord Hart, the traitor who poisoned him and imprisoned his soul in an undead corpse. When I came to Arathia, it was to mourn a great king and a loving father. Your enemies have waged war to prevent me from seeing you one last time. I have driven them from the land. They will not disturb your eternal slumber ever again. Great victories and great tragedies have marked the Griffinheart history. Your death brings an end to the Restoration War and the Griffinheart lineage. I will miss you dearly, Father, and think of you often. Rest in peace. For the first time in the history of the contested lands, humans and elves have fought alongside one another to defend the region from invaders. When the celebration is over, old hatreds will return and we will be citizens of a land in conflict. We must think about the future of the contested lands. It is time to shape its future. 
If our fight for independence is to succeed, we need something greater than our armies to motivate the populace. We need a symbolic cornerstone. Seek out the grail in the enchanted lands where the unicorns converse with the trees. Our cause is public. Ironically, many humans have joined the elfin population in our vision of an independent state. Already factions loyal to Arathia and Avli organized to stop us. We cannot continue without a strong base of operations. Farouk Wellen, mayor of the town of Wellen, has sent a messenger. He offers his protection and support. Our war for independence begins now. We must fight our way to Wellen and establish the Grail. When we have accomplished this, Wellen will become our foundation. We have come far very quickly. Armies from Arathia and Avli have arrived to restore order. This jeopardizes our quest for independence, and such hostile elements could ignite a larger war. It is our duty to establish Wellen as the capital of the contested lands and drive the rule of Arathia and Avli from this territory. If we do not, we will lose all we have fought for, and two great nations may once again reenact the carnage of the Timber Wars. Today we declare our independence from the nations of Arathia and Avli. I have underestimated my opponent's strength and resolve. During the Restoration Wars, the Cregans were of minor concern. Now they fight with an urgency neither I nor Roland have encountered. I have pulled the bulk of my forces back behind Arathia's border. Between us and the Cregans lies Moss Valley. It is one of Arathia's more beautiful landscapes. Tactically, it is ideal. If I can hold this valley, I can close the border. Then I can determine how to destroy the Demon King Lucifer and his quest to set the world on fire with Armageddon's blade. Messengers inform me Queen Catherine and Roland Ironfist are retreating to the Arathian border. Avli has chosen to turn a blind eye toward the war, but have purposely left local heroes to their own will. Under the Queen's orders, we are to wage a hit-and-run war along the Avli border. Our only support will be local militia hostile toward the Cregans. Should we be captured, Arathia and Avli will disavow any knowledge of our actions. Otherwise, this task is no different than before. My quest is sacred, given to me by the king himself. I have searched the continent for the relics he desires. When I have come close, a mysterious hero has spirited my prize away. I have pursued these heroes for months. Now, I have them cornered. They will either surrender the relics, their lives, or both. My king seeks to build Armageddon's blade. With this fabled weapon, he will set the world on fire. I have the elements to build the blade, but only the Grand Forge Smith Kazandar can fashion it from the relics I carry. Again, a collection of mysterious heroes gathered to end my quest. Ironically, they have surrounded Kazandar, but have not killed him as I would. This proves they are soft. They will not stand in my way. Heroes from the Confluxes tell us the Elemental Gods have sent them to us. So together we might destroy Lucifer Cregan and his quest to set the world on fire. Catherine trusts these new allies. I am not as giving. However, we do not have a choice, as support for the war wanes and our forces dwindle. If these elemental heroes are to be our allies, they will prove themselves in this forthcoming battle, under my command.
In my operations, information is always scarce and never given full trust. Now, I am told the elemental confluxes we have encountered have allied with Queen Catherine in her war to destroy King Lucifer Cregan. I have orders to move deep into Eofu, behind the main Cregan force Catherine holds at the border. There, I am to cut off any potential escape route. I pray this is not a trap. With the majority of the Cregan forces destroyed, Arathia's lords have grown weary of this war and have withdrawn their support. They do not understand. This is a critical moment. To continue this war, I have stepped down as Arathia's queen. Myself, Roland, and the Conflux forces will continue to press to the capital of Eofor. However, between us and the Demon King stands the hero Zeron. We are told he wields Armageddon's blade. We must succeed for the safety of Arathia and the world. Armageddon's blade is no longer a threat. However, King Lucifer Cregan still sits upon the throne of Eofol. What few clans remain have rallied to defend their king and his lost cause. Arathian spies tell us the Demon King has requested support from the Dungeon Overlords of Nyon. We cannot confirm this. If it is true, we cannot allow Lucifer to receive this aid. We must dethrone the Demon King. Time is short, but now we wield Armageddon's blade. It is time we take Armageddon into the heart of Hell itself. Lucifer Cregan is dead. The few remaining Cregan clans have gone into hiding. All but a few of the elemental conflexes have disappeared. I am sure we will see them again, if needed. As for myself and Roland, we will soon depart for Enroth, and I will see my son again. As for Jelyu, I left Armageddon's blade in his hands. Following our victory, he and his guerrilla army vanished into the Arathian forests. I do not know if he intends to destroy the weapon or keep it for himself. In time, I'm sure we will all know. Orwald. I find the name distasteful. This old man has held rich nigh on lands given to him by a much greater father. He has squandered his time and done little to earn his stature. I have stood in his shadow and by his borders too long. His lands will be mine. Orwald is absent. Hmm. No wonder his lands were so easy to take. It seems he has spent his life and his father's fortune in pursuit of the fabled vial of dragon's blood. It is said to hold blood taken from the dragon father. It is believed drinking it will transform the user into a sentient dragon. Orwald isn't as stupid as I believed. Still, he is old. I will find him and the vial, but first, I must dispose of the young lords who have heard the news and nip at my I have found Orwald. He is close to the vial, but his conservative actions and slow thinking leaves the way open for me to surpass him. As much as I must worry about Orwald, I must consider the vial. Once I have passed him, there is the vial, and no doubt, it will have guardians. Dragon guardians. I am successful. Now Orwald and his lackeys seek to slay me and drink my blood. They believe it will transform them as the bile transformed me. They will never drink my blood. I will be the one to drink their blood. Orwald is dead. His lackeys are dead. Their lands and riches belong to me. Soon, all of 
of Nyon will be long. My mother has finished preparations for my final test. The finest crystals stealthily taken from the caverns of Kulag has been used to create a great dragon golem. This creature's construction is a feat of magical prowess. To destroy it is even a greater feat. Yet I have heard the greatest feat a dragon slayer can accomplish is to kill a rare and mighty Azure Dragon. Rust dragons have taken to feeding from the mines near the town of Ochre. These uncommon beasts have chased off the peasantry and now their livelihoods are in jeopardy. As a hero, I should do this for the town's people. Yet I do this to hone my skills. Where rust dragons abound, the Azure may be nearby. I have never seen a fairy dragon. Little is known about these notorious troublemakers. What is known is found more in storybooks than magical tomes. Some say they are invisible. Some say they can cast spells. Some say they are only three feet high. Some say they are the henchmen of the Azure Dragons. I do not know what to expect or how my skills will be tested. Nevertheless, the more I know, the better I will be prepared for the Azure Dragons. I have found a nest of mighty Azure Dragons. I have also found my destiny. Azure Dragons do not nest for long and command an entourage of dragons of all colors. The task is great, but I am determined. My victory is hollow. I do not understand why. I have accomplished what only the elite dream. In my private moments, I have felt this beast would be the key to unlock a long-sought personal contentment. I was wrong. My dissatisfaction stirs, and I wonder, what is next? Alongside my father, I have killed Behemoth before, but never an ancient Behemoth. To contest the throne, I must slay one of these fearsome beasts. I relish the encounter. After I have slain this one, I will know how to subdue them. Then I will employ them in my bloody ascension to kingship. I have tamed the great beast. Now I must tame the monsters of the land. As the carnage grows, so does my power and bloodlust. I will sit upon the throne of Krulad. Neither man or beast will stand in my way. In the Festival of Life, those who fail either die at the hands of their enemies or by their own hand after capture. I will be merciful toward my opponents. I will take no prisoners. Many respect King Baragas. Many feel he is one of the greatest rulers Krulad has ever known. I do not know this king personally, and I find his accomplishments unimpressive. If he is to earn my respect, he will do so only when he stands over my grave. I have bathed in the blood of my enemies and sit upon the throne of Krulad. My reign begins now. I am king. Traveling from Erothia to my homeland of Tatalia, I have passed through several towns. I have yet to encounter a living soul. There is only the lingering stench of the undead. I fear a necromancer in the area is raising an army. Who is unknown? Why is unknown? With the conclusion of the Restoration War, Lord Hart's necromantic cult disbanded and went into hiding. It appears that they have resurfaced and resurrected their leader. Now Lord Hart walks the Tatalian lands, a death knight. If I am to continue my hunt for the dead warrior, I will need help. 
I hope my countrymen will be wise and not shun a hero who embraces fire magic. I do not know what the dead remember from their time among the living. If Lord Hart had memory of Tatalia, it has failed him. Scouts report the dead knight has turned northwest and set up along the coast. Now, I have him trapped. However, army morale is low. My people do not like following the Fire Witch, yet they dislike becoming undead. Tomorrow, I will wake and this nightmare will end for myself, Tatalia, and its people. I do not know if I have buried a hero or a villain. In my travels, I have heard many stories of Lord Hart's bravery and ultimate downfall. When I am laid to rest, I wonder if the stories my countrymen tell will speak of me as a fire witch in a land of earth and water, or as a hero. All I wanted was a simple vacation. One hurricane later and I'm here on this island with these foul-smelling natives. Perhaps my father was right when I told him about my dream to become a fragrance alchemist. Maybe my military training can help me get off this forsaken sand prison. I swear, these natives only know two things. How to start a war and how to throw a party. Apparently, the natives I just defeated want me off the island as much as I want off. One condition, I must reclaim the lands I just took from them. Oh, the stench! I don't know if it's poetic justice, a bad joke, or plain rudeness, but I was informed my native friends forgot the rather important navigation equipment. After many days and nights, we found our salvation and discovered another small island, full of pirates. Apparently they too do not understand the arts of the fragrance alchemist. If you were to ask me where my loyalties lie, in all honesty, I would answer, to whomever could get me home. So when I learned of the nearby Arathian outpost, I knew I had found my escape. I left those filthy pirates in the middle of the night, and I arrived at the Arathian outpost the following morning. Little did I know the outpost was the next target of my former pirate allies. What luck! I've managed to catch a ride aboard Queen Catherine's ship en route to Arathia to attend her father's funeral. I'm told the Arathian countryside is quite beautiful. At last, I can leave all this combat behind. I think it should make a fitting vacation spot. I can't wait. It is hard to believe a year has passed since Archibald and his necromancer allies were defeated, ending the succession wars. In that time, I have been living a nightmare, for I see the ghosts of the fallen all throughout Enroth. I hope my former teacher Amanda is right. I hope moving to a new land, to Antagorich, will still the ghosts of the war. I have met a wizard named Sandro, who is conducting research to combat necromancy. He is creating a magical amulet which will ward off the undead and wants to pay me a large sum of gold to find the pieces he needs to construct it. He seems to think me quite the mercenary. When I delivered the amulet of the Undertaker to Sandro, he told me he had also hired a barbarian named Tarek to locate another artifact, the Vampire's Cowl. However, Tarek is long overdue and Sandro fears for his life. From what I can see, bandits have captured Tarek and are holding him for ransom in an underground prison near the Deja border. I begin my quest for the last item Sandra needs, the dead man's boots. Unlike the other artifacts, these may actually be inside Deja, for the borders are in dispute. One thing is certain, there will be several Dejan border lords in the area, and they will not like me being there. This is going to be a tough fight, but it will be worth it. 
important things are never free. Sandro has tricked me. But to what purpose? Why would he run off with the dead man's boots without paying me? Did he keep the money for himself? Did he give Etheric the other artifacts? He certainly couldn't have been an agent for Deja. The undead troops I destroyed to get the artifacts were worth more than the artifacts themselves. None of this makes sense. I will have to write to Etheric in Bracata and tell Lord Fayette about this immediately. The Forest God is Arathia's eyes and ears. We go where we are needed most, and that is usually places difficult for traditional fighting forces to reach. We are shadows of the forest that see all and bring silent death with a single unseen bow shot. You have done well in your training, Jell Yu, but now has come the time to take the final test. A small valley near Gaia's crest will be the site of this trial. Clear the region of all the enemies to earn your place among the ranks of the Forest God. Good luck. Rumor has it that the Ring of Health, one of the essential components of the Elixir of Life, is located in the Shantana region of Southern Avli. Time is of the essence, for a Death Knight has been spotted talking to bandits who have long been terrorizing the area, and we believe that he has hired them to find the Ring first. The Ring of Life, the second component of the Elixir of Life, is hidden in the Valley of Degron. There lives a group of powerful elven nobility, who are the caretakers of several wardens of gold and green dragons. These dragon lords have always been loyal to Avli, but we fear that one of these lords has been corrupted by the necromancers. If this treacherous dragon lord gets the ring before you, he will become an enemy too powerful for the forces of Avli to withstand. The final artifact needed to construct the Elixir of Life is in the undead hands of the vampire Lord Vakail. It is said the vial of lifeblood allows him to sustain himself without having to resort to more distasteful means of bloodletting. Although this artifact can be said to be preventing some evil where it is, our need for the vial is even more desperate. You must find a way to steal the vial from this vampire. But keep in mind that not every task need be accomplished by direct means. Use your training wisely, and stay sharp. I've completed construction of the Elixir of Life and saved Avli from the threat of the Necromancers of Deja, earning myself an honorable position within the Forest Guard. I look forward to my service faithfully protecting this beautiful land I love so much. After watching me clobber a pack of goblins in a bar fight, a wizard named Sandro asked me to come to his table. He wants to pay me to find him something called a skull helmet. <laughs> I'll probably have to bash someone's head in to get it. <laughs> Sounds like it's gonna be fun. I went back to the tavern to give Sandro this ugly helmet he wanted. Now he wants me to get some kind of sword from a death knight. That tin-plated corpse is hiding out in a swamp, so I have to trudge through miles of muck before I get a chance to hack the sword out of his cold, dead hands. I got Sandro his cursed sword, and now he wants me to fight more moldy necromancers to get some kind of armor made out of bones. Ha! Huh. It'll be their bones I smash! Now that I gave him the Death Knight sword, Sandra wants me to fight some more necromancers for a shield! More stinking undead to fight! This is not as much fun as I thought. But at least this is the last thing I have to find for that puny wizard to get my reward. I've been tricked! The Thieving Wizard took off with the artifacts and didn't give me my gold. When I find Sandro, I'm gonna rip his arms off and shove him down his lying throat!
All my life I have been studying magic under the wizards of Bacata to please my mother, a genie. But it is the blood of my barbarian father that runs through my veins, and I feel that my hands were meant to carry a sword rather than a staff. Fate seems to agree, for I have received an invitation from Duke Winston Baragas of Krulat to join his army. The time has come for me to leave this place, but I know that my teachers will not permit that without a fight. Since escaping from Brakada, I have been attacked by a number of Krulod's armies. I do not understand why this would be, for I was invited here by the Duke himself. I must travel to the capital to find out why Winston Baragas and all of his forces have turned against me. When I confronted Winston Baragas, he admitted to setting Krulod's armies against me to test my worthiness to join them. At first, I was angry at this deception, until the Duke pointed out that it was I who wanted to be a fighter. The barbarian within me saw his point. But Baragas has a test designed to see whether I am truly ready to part with the Wizards of Bracada. I must take the magical Angelic Alliance sword, break it apart, and distribute the pieces throughout Italia, Arathia, and Bracada. I gave up the first piece of the sword, although I had to resist all of my wizardly training to do so. Now, I am to find the hut of a seer named Fallon and give him two more pieces, the Celestial Necklace of Bliss and the Lion's Shield of Courage. This will be no simple errand, for the Arathians don't take kindly to large armies traipsing across their country. The last of Winston Baragas' tests will take me back to Bracada, my forsaken homeland. I am to find a couple named Beleg and Oryk and give them the two most powerful pieces of the Angelic Alliance, the Sword of Judgment and the Helm of Heavenly Enlightenment. That will be the easy part. Now that I am certain I am ready to give up the ways of magic, the hard part will be fighting my way past Bracada's armies for they will not be as willing to give me up. I have passed all the Duke's tests, proving I have given up magic forever, and he has accepted me into his barbarian horde. My mother would no doubt be disappointed in me, but now my new Krulog family welcomes me with raised tankards and promises of many adventures to come. It seems Etheric, my old master, has finally tracked me down. He hasn't been too happy about me becoming a necromancer. He wants to remove the blight from his career. Etheric is no fool. He spread word of my vocation to those who could stop me. It does not matter. I will defeat these fools, soundly beat my master, and continue on to Deja, where they will appreciate my talent. Etheric just doesn't give up, but I have found an ally. Vidomina is a young wizard with aspirations of being a necromancer. For the time being, she will be useful, but we will part ways once we get past Etheric and into Deja proper. Traveling to Deja, I met Phineas Vilmar, an ambitious but slightly foolish necromancer. He has some holdings here and is trying to increase his realm of power with my skills of persuasion. He should soon find himself in the position he craves. Of course, I will be the shadow whispering orders into his ear. Soon, Duke Alaris will find himself permanently among the dead. Right now, our plans go well as we prepare to launch an assault. Phineas does not agree with my tactics, but I know that his tactics are certain death. It is only a matter of time before he realizes his error and follows my direction. Soon, he will come to see that he cannot survive without my guidance. Our plan has been a great success. We are quickly on the rise. The king is impressed with Phineas's stunning show of force and ability. 
soon, the king will understand the full view of my vision. Then it will be too late for him. A necromancer is at work here. Peasants all throughout this land are turning up as walking corpses. But no noble or lord has come forward to put a stop to this. I will take it upon myself to destroy this menace. On my way to visit some relatives in Arathia, I came across a village that had its sacred artifact, the Head of Legion, stolen. The mayor wants the head back, as well as the other pieces of Legion, if I can find them. This is just what I need to lift my spirits. Some fun. This morning I learned Lord Falorel was dead. Apparently from poison. What was learned soon afterwards has sent shockwaves throughout all of Avli. He was actually a vampire disguised as an elvish warrior. I must find out who poisoned him and how he came to such a high position within Avli. When I went to tell Lord Fayette about Sandor tricking me, I learned he left on a mission into Deja while I was searching for the boots and had not yet returned. So I scribed for Lord Fayette and discovered his mission had gone horribly wrong. He had been killed by the necromancers and... and... resurrected as a death knight. Curse all necromancers! There is one last service I can do for my lord. I will grant his soul final peace by destroying the undead body chaining it to this world. I owe him that much. We two barbarians were glad to have found each other in this land of strangers. Both of us are following the trail of the necromancers, but I am shocked that their actions seem to have gone unnoticed by Arathian leaders. Crag was not interested in investigating my concern further until I mentioned his glorious battle. That always works with barbarians like him. Several days ago, the Avli Council of Elders commanded Jim and myself to avenge the deaths of Lord Falor, Lord Fiat, the Dragon Lords, and all the other victims of the Necromancer's raids. At the border, we encountered this... this horrific scene. The Dajian Lords must be destroyed before all of Adley is harvested for their undead armies. Four very brave but foolish heroes have entered my realm. They seek to dissuade me invading Arathia and Avli with their combined forces. However, I welcome their intrusion, for my undead armies could use more recruits. I shall harvest these heroes, and they will pay for their impudence with their eternal souls. It was easy to remove the Avli, Arathian, and Krulad troops from Dejan, but the invasion itself will be much more difficult. To launch an offensive that will not leave one border open, we must assault both borders simultaneously. Once again, Phineas wishes me to handle the matter personally. His faith in my abilities is touching, but even a puppet king must someday learn how to command if he is to be an effective tool. I know this region well. The lords who control this area are loyal to Arathia, but only when it suits them. We must be careful, for they are formidable foes and deeply entrenched. But if we are to locate the pieces of the Angelic Alliance, we may need to persuade these lords to assist us. Crag and I have been scouring the contested border between Arathia and Krulot for three barbarian brothers, each holding one of the artifacts we seek. However, we have been warned that the brothers hardly trust each other, let alone outsiders. They will not give up the artifacts without a fight, for that is what we barbarians do best. We have collected the pieces of the Angelic Alliance, but Sandro learned of our efforts and blocked our path. The bulk of his army now separates us from each other. We must break through the Necromancer's army and converge upon one point. 
Once we join the pieces of the Angelic Alliance, we can defeat Sandro. If we fail, he will dominate all of Antagorich. We face the Necromancer in his lair. The time of reckoning has come, but our vengeance must be carried out swiftly. Sandro has sent for reinforcements from others within Deja. Slow moving as undead are, they will still be here in four months. If we have not defeated Sandro by then, he will surely rule all of Antagorich. I shudder at the thought. Failure is simply not an option. After realizing how corrupting these artifacts are, we decided to split them up into less powerful components and disperse them throughout Antagorich. As for us, we decided to separate as well, to distance our thoughts from a disaster history may never record. Lord Hart has agreed to take the vial of poison to King Griffinheart. All I must do is leave the vial in Hart's castle after I raid it. Fortunately for me, he has a problem with overpopulation. So I will add his wasted peasants to my own ranks. This will be a good day for harvesting skeletons. To secure the Dungeon Overlord's support, I need to provide them with the gold and wood necessary to build a tunnel. Wood is desperately needed to keep the tunnels from collapsing, and the gold is for paying the workers. The greedy cave dwellers refuse to supply the raw materials themselves. If I did not need their support, I would lock them up in their own underground dungeons. Cregans are so arrogant. But I have need of their creatures to invade Arathia and crush her military. Without their brute strength, I would not be able to carry out all my plans. So I will play their little game and find their precious artifact, the ever-smoking Ring of Sulphur. Phineas has discovered that Smeth, an upstart lord, has gotten too ambitious. He is trying to usurp my position as Phineas's top advisor. To calm Phineas, I have agreed to take care of this little matter myself. It will be my pleasure sending the conniving lich to hell. Phineas is more cunning than I gave him credit for. He tricked me into getting in prison for assaulting an innocent lord so that he could rule Deja by himself and steal the credit for my plans to invade Arathia. Well, soon he will realize that I can pull his strings even from my cell and wrap them tightly around his neck.